Last week, Microsoft announced the Surface Pro 8. Is it better than the Surface Pro 7? Should you buy it? Let's take a look at what's happened with the Surface Pro 8 and how it compares to the Surface Pro 7 and the Surface Pro 7 Plus. We'll also take a deep dive into two of the features that I think are huge milestones for the Surface range. The Surface Pro 8 represents the first major change to the design of the main Pro line since the Surface Pro 3 was released in October 2015. The Pro 3 was a major turning point for the Surface as a two-in-one. It introduced the exceptionally usable 3x2 12-inch display and a brand new kickstand hinge and a new pen design. But from the Surface Pro 3 to the Surface Pro 7 Plus, well, the overall design of the chassis and the kickstand of the Surface Pro pretty much stayed the same. There has been a lot of changes and tweaks within that framework over the last six years, of course, but the design pretty much stayed static. Fast forward to 2021, and now the Pro 8 has been upgraded to match the design of the Surface Pro X. It's got a larger 13-inch screen, up from the 12.3 of the Surface Pro 7. It retains roughly the same dimensions, but the bezels, the edges around the screen, are much smaller as a result. It has rounded corners to match the Pro X and Windows 11, and it uses the Surface Pro X style keyboard. The new keyboard has a space in it to store the pen securely. When you fold the keyboard to the back of the device, the pen pops forward into easy reach. The pen is magnetically stored in this spot and it charges wirelessly whenever it's stowed. Technically, the Pro 8 is slightly thicker, about a half a millimeter thicker than the Pro 7, but it's unlikely to be noticeable. It's also gained a bit of weight, perhaps about 100 grams. This could be explained partially by a switch from a magnesium alloy chassis to an aluminium alloy. Weight varies across the range depending on the processor and specs that you choose, so we're yet to see exactly how that plays out across the different models. So it's marginally thicker and heavier, but what do we gain for that? Well, there is a bigger battery than the Pro 7, with a much longer runtime. The 50.4 watt hour battery is benchmarked to 16 hours of runtime versus the Pro 7's 10.5 hours. That's a pretty substantial increase. Of course, there was another Surface Pro after the Pro 7, the Surface Pro 7 Plus for business. Pro 7 Plus was only sold through commercial resellers. They didn't make a version of it for retail stores, but if you already had a Surface Pro 7 Plus for business, well, you've probably only gained around an extra hour of runtime. The Surface Pro 7 had a 10th generation Intel Core processor, and the Pro 8 has the 11th generation quad core i5 and quad core i7 options. The business-only Pro 7 Plus already had 11th generation processors, but the i7 model is a slightly higher spec on the Pro 8. That said, it seems that Surface have pushed the limits on these processors a little bit higher, potentially clocking extra performance from the range by allowing more power in. And they've been able to do that by improving the cooling systems across the range. It appears at this stage that all of the models will go back to having fans on board. And most of the time, you probably won't know that they're there, but active cooling will ultimately allow the Pro 8s to deliver a much higher level of performance. The Surface Pro 8 will be fast, of course, but it's not designed to be the fastest computer on the market. And while Apple M1 fans will probably try and invade the comments chanting benchmarks at me, they are completely irrelevant because every single day the Surface Pro line becomes more versatile than a glorified typewriter could ever be. So with the Surface Pro 8, there will again be a Pro 8 for business that'll differ slightly from the Pro 8 for retail. The business options are only available from commercial and education Surface resellers like us here at Tablet PC. Business versions come in more IT-friendly recycled packaging that has important product details like the serial number and IMEI printed clearly on the outside of the box. They have different processes that include Intel vPro management features, different TPM, and they come with better first-party warranty options like accidental damage cover. Now, each market has their own different warranty setup, so check with your local Microsoft website to see how it works in your country. Speaking of IMEI numbers, LTE Mobile Broadband will now be available across the entire range, i3, i5, and i7 models, at least in the Surface Pro for business line. This 4G wireless capability can deliver speeds of up to 1.2 gigabits, so even though it's not 5G still, it's more than good enough for remote working. As usual, the 4G models will take a little bit longer to arrive, at least here in Australia. The display is brighter at 450 nits, and there are now more pixels at 2880 by 1920 resolution, still in that brilliant 3x2 aspect ratio. The display now has a refresh rate of up to 120 hertz, making for smoother video. This should also significantly enhance the pen experience, especially when combined with the new Surface Slim Pen 2 that was announced alongside of the Pro 8. There's Dolby Vision and Adaptive Color for better video playback too. 
Bluetooth has been upgraded to the latest 5.1 standard and Wi-Fi 6 is still supported. The speaker's got an upgrade to 2 watts and they now have Dolby Atmos certification. The headphone jack is still there too. The back camera now shoots 4K video and 10 megapixel stills. The front webcam appears to have had some software enhancements, improving what was already a high quality webcam experience. The Windows Hello face recognition camera is now much faster too. There is a removable SSD just like there was on the Pro 7 Plus and the Pro X, but like the Pro X, the Pro 8 does not have a micro SD card slot. That's a little bit annoying to me since I'll need to have a USB-C to micro SD card adapter on hand, but the fact that the SSD could be easily replaced I think mitigates the storage limit factors. So overall, the Pro 8 is a significant hardware upgrade for anyone with a Surface Pro 7 or something earlier. But there are two things that I think are really worth diving in on the new Surface Slim Pen 2 and Thunderbolt 4. Firstly, Thunderbolt. On the left side of the Pro 8, you won't find a USB 8 port anymore. Instead, you'll find two USB C ports. Now, I know that's going to be a bit of a pain since you have many old school USB peripherals, but a USB C to A adapter is a couple of bucks and they're very handy anyway. These ports do all of the things that the old USB-C ports on the Pro 7 and Pro 7 Plus did with USB-C power delivery charging, support for the DisplayPort protocol over USB-C, so you can plug in two external displays straight into those ports. But now with Thunderbolt, you have a direct PCI Express connection between external hardware and your Surface Pro 8's processor. This enables much faster data transfer speeds, a minimum of 32 gigabits per second, compared to 10 gigabits per second for the older USB-C port on the Pro 7. So that's great for external storage and data transfer. It also opens up the possibility of using an external graphics processor or an eGPU. What that enables is yet to be seen since the mobile grade processor will still be a limiting factor for many games and applications, but it'll be interesting to see what people do with this option. We'll test it out as soon as we can get our hands on it. But think about it, the Surface Pro 8 is a tablet, still lighter than the original iPad, and it's a laptop that you can set up like a workstation PC with two 4K displays and an external GPU. And you don't even need a dock to do it. Talk about flexibility. And speaking of flexibility, let's finally talk about the pen on the Surface Pro 8. I've spoken many times on this channel of the importance of digital pen input. If you haven't adopted digital ink yet, well, you need to do it urgently. The COVID pandemic has seen millions of people around the world suddenly working and learning from home. The basic structure of meeting together changed and we suddenly became far more aware of working with people who were not in the same room with us. We experienced Zoom fatigue for the first time and we lost some of the important elements of being in the room together. For example, the low formality visual and spatial point of meeting focus that is the whiteboard or the Kanban board. If you're still trying to replace these things with a keyboard and mouse, well, you're probably feeling very frustrated like you're spinning your wheels. But if you had a digital pen and you could collaborate on a digital whiteboard together, then it's a completely different story. The Surface Pro 8 upgrades the experience of note taking, ideating, whiteboarding, sketching and drawing to a new level with the Surface Slim Pen 2. If you're interested in using a digital pen for creative work, then you'll be excited to hear that this latest iteration of the Surface Pen has finally gotten rid of that slow diagonal line problem that the previous generations had. Justice from Tablet Pro, and I'll leave a link to his channel below, has shared that the so-called jitter problem has been resolved with this new pen. The activation force of the pen has also been lowered from nine grams to one gram, meaning that you could ever so lightly feather the pen across the screen. For most Surface Pen users, these things were never really a big problem. But the new Surface Slim Pen has some other upgrades in store for regular note takers or whiteboarders like haptic feedback. There's a motor inside of the new pen that mimics the feel of dragging your pen, pencil, or brush across real paper or canvas surfaces. This should be a really interesting addition that will hopefully convince more people to give it a try and stick with it. As with the Surface Pro X Slim Pen, this one recharges wirelessly inside of its pen slot within the keyboard. So you just never need to wonder if it's charged, ever. And since it's tucked away in the keyboard, it's much harder to lose and it'll always be there when you need it. The pen tip is pointier, and the G6 chip in the screen that communicates with the pen has been upgraded to cater for that haptic feedback. And together with a 120 hertz display, pen tip lag has been reduced even further beyond the limits of human perception. 
So this new Surface Pro 8 certainly has some major advantages over the Surface Pro 7 and prior models. And for me, the updates to the display and the Surface Pen experience alone make it a worthy upgrade. The Surface Pro line is still Microsoft's best selling, although the Surface Laptop is fast catching up. So if you're wondering, should I buy the Surface Laptop 4 or the Surface Pro 8? Well, the answer is now very easy. You simply can't beat the Surface Pro 8 for flexibility, performance, and possibility. Now, if you're one of the many people that comment on my videos saying, I'd never use a pen on a computer, then I'm sorry that you're wrong. And if you wanna know why I can confidently say that, then you need to watch our series on the science behind the pen. If you're not yet using a digital pen, it's time to learn how to. So subscribe to this channel right now, hit that bell, and take a look at some of our videos on the topic using the links below. Did the Surface Pro 8 deliver on your expectations? Tell us what you're thinking about the Pro 8 in the comments below, and we'll see you soon with a video on the Surface Duo 2 and the Surface Laptop Studio. Now this enables much farther, farther. Unbelievable. Justice from Tablet Pro, Pro? Justice from Tablet Pro. Justice from Tablet Pro. Justice from Tablet Pro, Pro, yeah.